In today's video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step guide on how to sell life insurance successfully, whether you're selling face-to-face, -face, remotely, over the phone or using Zoom, whether you're brand new to the business, experienced or struggling, I'm gonna give you my three-step sales process to convert more of your existing insurance leads into excited life insurance buyers. So if you're interested in learning how to sell more life insurance and stick around. Greetings and salutations. My name is David Duford. I own DeFord Insurance Group. I do train agents nationally to sell life insurance products like final expense as well as Medicare, annuities and ACA under 65 health insurance. And I invite you to check out how my agency works to see if you're a good fit at davidduford.com forward slash FAQ. So what I'm about to share with you in this three-step sales system to sell life insurance successfully truly is the culmination of training agents almost for a decade now in the life insurance space. And the good news is that life insurance sales doesn't have to be difficult. It can be simple if you have a process to implement in order to convince those maybe suspicious prospects that life insurance is a good idea for them and it will benefit them. So let's get started with that three-step sales process right now. Step number one, pre-qualify. So pre-qualifying is defined as asking preliminary questions to your prospect to determine if that prospect is what we would call a qualified buyer who has a high odds chance of buying versus a low qualified non-buyer, maybe somebody who has a very low chance of buying. And the thing you've got to understand when selling life insurance new to the business or struggling or experienced is you want to spend all of your time talking to qualified prospects who are more likely going to buy. In fact, this step is the most important step of all of the steps I'm going to teach you today because if you learn how to qualify effectively, you'll be spending more often your time with people who are very interested and thus more likely to buy than struggling and getting frustrated with those prospects who have a low odds chance of buying. And there's nothing that gets you out of the business fast or failing than talking to people who don't want to buy. So listen closely as I give you some techniques on how to qualify effectively. The first step you need to do is think about the sales process itself. Define what a ideal buyer is. What kind of criteria do they meet? What type of needs and desires do they have? And as you go through this process, you need to turn those bullet points into questions that you ask sooner in the process of the sales around the beginning where you start to qualify that lead. For example, in the final expense space, I have five criteria that I need to have answered in order for me to sell that person a policy. For example, I need need and I need want. They have to need a final expense plan and they have to desire to get it today as opposed to putting it off any longer. I also have to have health questions answered so I know which plan to put the client in. I've got to have a bank account or some kind of card to set up an automatic draft because we don't collect monthly premiums. And last but not least, I have to have a budget range that the client is 100% confident in that they can place their premium at so they can afford it on a monthly basis. And when I have all those criteria, I have a likely high odds chance of closing this person later on. And likewise, if I don't have even one of those criteria, that person is unqualified and I am looking for the door or reason to hang up the phone and talk to a real prospect. So bottom line, think of the things that you have to ask in order to qualify the prospect. For example, do they have debt that they're concerned with? If they die, it's gonna be left behind to a loved one, like a mortgage. What happens if the breadwinner dies in the family? How does that affect the surviving spouse? and their surviving children and impact their lifestyle. Take these kind of questions and issues and hot button issues and integrate them into questions earlier in your presentation and what you will see is a more interested prospect that will meet more often your criteria of buying and therefore buy more often. Step two, present and position. So now that you have a qualified prospect, that is likely to buy. So for example, in my situation, they have a desire and a need to cover their final expenses. They want peace of mind. They don't wanna burden their loved ones with their final expenses. They also have good enough health. They've got a bank account they're willing to let me draft and they've got a budget they've agreed to allowing me to take to pay for their premium. If I got all that, great, but now the next step is to properly present and position how my product works 
relative to the competition. And this is a critical step. We don't live in a vacuum where your prospect only will think of buying from you. Every prospect out there sees commercials from State Farm. They get junk mail constantly. They have their friends and family members telling them to buy from this agent or that agent. You live in a competitive environment when it comes to the insurance business, no matter what kind of life insurance product you sell. So please don't downplay the importance of positioning yourself as to why your option is a superior choice. In other words, you gotta be able to express in the mind of the prospect under what circumstances buying from you would be the best suited for the prospect. And one of the best strategies to do that is to employ what I call the good versus evil methodology. So using the idea of expressing uh, the good guys versus the bad guys is a pretty easy way to express the differences between how your product works, the good guy, versus whoever we frame as the bad guy being their product is inferior in some sort of way. And it may sound elementary, but when you have a relative comparison between how your product works and an honest discussion about the pros and then an honest discussion about your competition, about what their downfalls are, and maybe even talking about the upsides, what that allows the client to do is to better position your advantages in your product better because there's been a relative comparison made. And the outcome is, is when they decide to do business with you, they'll more concisely take action because of how you've expressed the difference and more likely keep what you sold them because simultaneously you express what you would be looking at had you went another direction and what the likely negative outcomes would be. So to give you an example of how we do this in the final expense life insurance space, I literally love to show my prospects a brochure from my competition. For example, I'll show Colonial Pins brochure as well as AARP New York Life's brochure and show them the fine print where they themselves can see the inadequacies in the competition's ability to cover for the length of time like with term insurance or in the, in the way with guaranteed issue that uh, the Colonial Pen product sells, how there's no coverage for natural death for the first two years. And from there, I can build up the consequences of what happens if you buy one of these plans. What if you outlive the term insurance plan? What if you can't afford the price increases with how some of these term insurance products work with five-year incremental increases? Or what if you die early in the guaranteed acceptance colonial pen plan from natural causes and don't have any coverage to the amount of face amount that you purchased to reflect what it is that you really need. The point is, is when I describe my competition and show to them the inadequacies, it's easier for the client to visually understand the differences in insurance products and then why mine is better. For example, my plans last forever. They don't cancel. They're full coverage. The rates never increase. This is what we call final expense whole life insurance. And when going through that explanatory process, it makes it much easier for that prospect to commit to you because you've taken the time to inform them and empower them on what the options are and it becomes much easier to make that commitment to you and to buy from you. Another thing I like to do in this present and position section is tie the benefits of my product back to the hot button issues that the client expressed earlier. For example, in final expense life insurance sales, many of our prospects are worried about being a burden. They're worried about leaving a large final expense to a loved one who can't afford it and uh, encumbering them financially in a bad way. So I tell them with the final expense life insurance plan that I can qualify them for, they're fully covered from the first payment date and they don't ever have to worry ever again about being a burden to a loved one because you're giving them and you peace of mind knowing that your final expenses are completely 100% covered. And again, by making that connection verbally with their hot button issues with how your product works, it solidifies the desire, belief, and willingness to take action to buy, thus making more often than not those high odds prospects buyers. So bottom line, you gotta present and position yourself as why you're the obvious choice amongst the competition, because that is going to push your client over the edge and wanting to do business with you versus the others and take action today in buying a policy. Step three, close and rebut objections. So hopefully guys realize by now that you have to ask for the sale. You can't just hope that they'll buy. You have to verbally actually ask the prospect 
to take action today to buy a life insurance plan. And so you've got to have a strategy in place about how to do that because there's a right way and a wrong way. And while also dealing with most likely what happens to everybody, which is experience objections or pushback from the prospect from making a decision. So let me give you some advice on how to close effectively so you can convert those life insurance prospects to sales on the first call. Number one, make sure that you're making recommendations directly related to the hot button issues the client has. So when I'm closing a final expense life insurance product, I like to tell a little bit about the company, uh, some details, not a lot, but enough to get the client to understand that this is a professional company that does a great job. But more importantly, I always connect why I'm selling this particular company to the client to whatever their hot button issues are to differentiate and sell further in the mind of the prospect why this particular plan is better than the rest. So for example, if a client of mine has COPD and I recommend them buying Forrester's on a standard pricing basis, I'm gonna tell them flat out, hey, this is one of the best options because it's one of the few that give first day full coverage in the case of COPD, whereas most carriers typically make you wait two full years if they even accept you at all. Many will just decline you. And by saying that, I help again differentiate and clarify in the mind of the prospect why this plan, maybe it's the first time they've ever heard of it, still is the best plan while retaining their confidence in buying from me. Also, when we're closing, we want to make sure to simplify the closing process. Don't present five, six, seven different options. That's too many options and confused people with too many options don't ever actually make a decision. Instead, what I recommend is to do the good, better, best close. So the good, better, best close is where you have three different options. Very simple, a good option, a better option, and a best option. So what I like to do in final expenses, take a clean sheet of paper, or if you're over the phone, just verbally give each digit of the face amount and then the premium, and then write that down and show it to them. Nothing else on the paper, nothing else explained in the process. Let them look at the numbers, digest it, and then the best script to close over those numbers you show them is simply to say, out of these three options, which one do you want to start with today? And notice I didn't ask for permission. Do you want to buy today? They may say no because I've given them a no. When I ask a question where I assume they're gonna buy, which one of these do you wanna to start today? There's a sense of momentum behind that question where the client's that much more likely to make a decision of one of the three options because you didn't give them a no to choose from. So please, when you're closing, never give them the option of saying no. You're not trying to ask for permission, you're assuming the close, so give them three yes options with no, no option. So the last thing you want to be aware of is that even if you do everything right in your life insurance sales presentation, you need to always anticipate to hear objections. People are going to say, I need to think about it. I need to go talk to my daughter. I need to pray to my pet rock. There's all sorts of objections people give and you need to expect them, not think that you're special and you'll get away without ever hearing them, but needless to say, have a plan to actually handle those objections so you can turn them around and still close them on the first call anyway. So what I'm gonna give you now is my exact word for word script to handle life insurance objections at the close and give you advice on how to turn those around so that you can still win them and get the deal closed today. So when a client says, I need to think about it, my response generally is, that's fine, but when you say you need to think about it, how do you mean? By saying, how do you mean, it allows you to get the client to explain more of where they're stuck, to give you more context to essentially turn it around. Many times that I need to think about an objection as a smoke screen, it's not real. You need to uncover what the objection is and saying, how do you mean, is the best strategy to get to the next level of where they're really stuck at. The next step is to isolate that objection that you've heard. Maybe they say, well, I'm not so sure about the price. It's maybe a little out of my budget. You then need to say, okay, so what you're saying is the price is of concern. So besides price, is there any other reason that you would not move forward today? And in most cases they say no. So now we've isolated that objection and now we can begin the process of rebuttaling that objection and convincing the client that it's still okay to buy today. So in this case, what would you say? Well, if they said the price is too high, I would simply say, no problem, Mrs. Prospect, here's what we're gonna do. Let's start with the lower price of uh, available here or drop it a little bit further. 
And then I'd continue to sell them on why a smaller policy is still a good idea because something is better than nothing, Mrs. Prospect. God forbid if you died tomorrow and wouldn't have anything, it would be zero, but at least you could start with some coverage. Some money's better than no money. I'm sure your beneficiaries agree. And we can always come back in six or 12 months, reassess what your budget looks back and add more coverage later. The last step here, no matter what it is that you say in that selling section, because it can be all sorts of things, you need to always remember to close. Always say, who do you want your beneficiary to be? Or which one of these options do you want to start with today? Always go back to closing. If you just sell them on why they should do it today but without the next step of closing into are they going to buy this one or that one, then in many cases people will be like, well, okay, I still need to think about it. You're at that cusp of momentum. You need to push that all over the edge. The domino effect begins. So make sure you always close on whatever type of rebuttal strategy that you use whenever you hear objections. So that is my simple three-step how to sell life insurance strategy. I hope you take this seriously and implement the strategies uh, that we discussed today. This will help you sell more life insurance policies remotely or face-to-face. -face. So please put it into effect. If you got any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't already. And if you're interested in learning more about joining DeFord Insurance Group, head on over to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ. See you later.